I am Shane. Welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be turning the wheel spacers that I had made the chuck jaw spacers for in the previous video. Uh, we'll be turning them, chamfering the corners on the boy Neem's lathe, and then bringing them over to the uh, Delta Rockwell 15-120 ram type radial drill press, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's pretty interesting, and it's a really good application for that. Um, that machine uh, after that I'll probably do a quick little shop date update um, I have some new tool acquisitions uh, some things need to be moved around a little bit of work to do on on a couple new to me machines and uh, we'll go over that then um, uh, take a minute here we'll talk about some shop stickers um, for one I have mine and I'm looking to get this out to uh, other YouTube creators and get their stickers so we can kind of talk about each other's channels uh, or whatever <laughs> whatever it is we do but that's mine okay and then I uh, recently received one from Mix Workshop that's a good channel if you haven't checked it out check it out every now and again he puts stuff up but it's usually pretty interesting um, for instance, uh, one video was, uh, tear down, break down, put together, clean, and, uh, demonstrate a, a criterion pouring and facing head. Pretty cool. Uh, most recent one was, uh, uh dealing with a, a new ultrasonic cleaner that he got, which is, that's handy information. See how it works. See if that's a good piece of equipment for everybody. Um, so check him out, uh, Metalworks Machine Shop, got your stickers, that's Doug, uh, cool guy, real nice guy, um, uh, he's a really cool Kearney and Trekker mill, all kinds of stuff, does a lot of tractor restorations, uh, really, really good restorations, uh, just at a Cub Cadet and it's freaking phenomenal, it's like a brand new piece of machinery, so check him out. Definitely check him out. Um, honorable mention here. Uh, DJ took his channel down recently, but you can still find him on Instagram. He's a heck of a guy. I got my Foxburg's Fabric Cobbling sticker. I'm going to definitely put that up. Definitely hope to see something in the future from him. But um, yeah, heck of a guy. I got his sticker. And kind of late here but I procured some uh some big uh keyway brooches for my Davis number two off of PJ Galati he is on Instagram uh so I got his sticker that's going to go up on the wall too when I find a wall um but yeah like I said my stickers if you're a YouTube creator and I'm going to get more made for uh you know you guys that that aren't if you really, really want one, feel free to ask. I'll probably send it to you. But the, the main goal of the first batch is just to get that on other channels and, um, you know, get it out there. Get the channel name out there and, and all that. So uh, without further ado, i get you over to the boy in Eames. Uh, currently have one of the wheel spacers set up because I wanted to check everything before I made a fool of myself on camera. Everything looks good. And I'll show you the setup for the second one and then we'll uh, move that on over after I get all four done to the radio and go through the machines like I said. All right, hang tight, taking you to the lathe. All right, so basically I set my indicator up, dial indicator there. Let's see, that's zeroed out on the part. All right, I'm going to take 125 thousandths off. Probably going to start with a 25 thousandths pass. Um, I did indicate in your outside and the face just to make sure, but I mean, it's tight against these, which it should be. That's why we machined them. It's tight against your spacers, and uh, we're within a thousandth out. They're a hair out. I think I showed that on the last video, but I managed to get it respectfully close. Um, and, and it's close. It's, it's, 
within a half a thou as far as your your diameter because we're gonna break these corners we need to put chamfers on after we're done and I'll use my dial indicator to determine how far I went in to make a certain chamfer so that I can repeat that so I'm gonna get moved out a little bit uh, get this tripod out of my way and start machining the, uh, the spacers and just go through all four and then move over to the, the little radio all right hang tight I'm gonna move you I'm gonna get you fired up get you a good seat for watching the machining process all right, we're sitting at 480 RPM, uh, 11 thousandths per rev uh, feed, and we're gonna try to take in try 20 thou off. And see what that does. Let's start just a little on the slow side. Run that, see how that does. Breaking chips really good. You can't complain about that. Here at whacking them holes. That'll be the most interesting part here. i clean them up. Shut him down. Do a look peek here. You think that'll be adequate. Just do a nice finish pass here. I figured about that 20,000, so I'm thinking about change that. That'll do 20, and I'll do a 5,000 finish pass. See how that treats us. So, here we go. Let's do it. Came all the way up. 40. That interrupted cut. I am to eighty. Oh boy. I still got some relatively good purchase on that chuck too. Be a hair close on the chamfer, but I think we're gonna be fine. More passes, one heavy and one finish. After this,
25,000 to go. This is 20. We will uh, mic it then, see where we're at so we can compare the others. Uh, indicator on there, it should be damn close. It should be perfect. Alright, taking that extra five. Just a little cut. Tell you what, we are gonna back out and run a spring pass just to try and church that up a little bit. I think we can deal with that. That's not too hateful, is it? It's smooth. All right. We're gonna make a chamfer on here. I think we'll just make it the same on either side. Uh, it's only on there for ease of installation, so. Set him at zero. It's a good, good spot here. Just bring that in. Nice and easy. Zero it off. Twenty thousand chamfer. Bring him back. Bring him to our same zero. That at thirty thou. There you go. That's flying everywhere, aren't you? you? Got a nice chamfer. All the way around. All right. Leave them happy with that. Get a micrometer here. Uh, zero to one.
All right. So 382. All right, so we know that our spacers are working, I mean, phenomenal, about perfect. Um, just going to pop it off, set the next one up. We'll double check it. Um, so basically, to chamfer it, I just pulled into the nearest zero and I moved in uh, 20 thousandths. And on the back side, I did the same thing. Yeah, the OD. And I uh, advanced 30 thousandths. So that worked out pretty good. I'm just going to repeat that on all the other ones. All right, three more to go. Be nice if it worked out where I can just loosen two and tighten two back up. But I got my doubts. It never seems to work that way, does it? All right. One spacer. A little bit of chatter there, but we've got to work just fine for us. One thing I can do is slow the machine down a little bit, but it's flat. I think it'll be fine. All right, on to the next one. Here. Boom. 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 Now we're going to double check this. We might have to tap that in and uh, kind of go from there. There you go. There's your within a thou. All right, now we got to come back. Check the other way. I'd rather do it now than have the part, you know, no good, so. back here like we did the last time to our nearest zero which is here and we're going to run in to our 20 thou mark to our nearest zero. May actually be this zero. Thirty 
And we didn't gall them up real bad with our vice or our chuck. So, should be sufficient. And then we'll come around and chamfer them. Two more to go. Probably do them off camera and bring you back over. Okay. Hang tight. All right. So this is the uh, aforementioned Delta Rockwell Ram type radial drill press. Smaller one. Uh, super handy. If you end up finding one at a good price and you got the room, pick that thing up because I've used this so many times it saved me. Um, you can spin this thing all the way around and drill off the back if you have something large that's, uh, as long as everything's level, but something that can't fit on the table. Um, you can see these adjusters here. It's like an eccentric. And there's two on either side, so you can level out your ram like, completely parallel to your table. Um, pretty much anything, if you have a bunch of holes that need, <clears throat> like we're doing here, just need, you know, uh, chamfered. This thing's phenomenal. Or even if you have something smaller that needs a bunch of holes drilled, tapped, whatever, you can fix it up with a tapping head. It's a really nice tool. Uh, this one took a little bit of work. I put a motor on it, rewired it, new belts. Bearings were fine in everything except for like your, your actual turret. Uh, replaced those, cleaned everything up. Uh, new chuck on it. Clearly it has new paint. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a perfect application for that. So I figured I'd share that. Um, zoom in a little bit, trying to show you my process here. It's clamped on ever so slightly. We'll make sure your tables, obviously you want to make sure your table's clean. <clears throat> Basically the way I do this, I don't keep it running. I'm missing a nut, but this is, uh, this is working. This is working for me. Um, I basically I have a hose clamp and I have the the one lower nut on my depth gauge just snugged up against it but it gives me what I need so this will self-center keep my handle slightly snug come in go to my stop pull out stop it clear it off do another one self-center on that type of chamfering bit start it roll with it and on to the next one you can see that's a pretty simple setup and i got 64 of these things to do so it's definitely an asset to have something like this around like i said i just thought you guys would enjoy seeing it see how quick i'm going <clears throat> I would say loosely this could be used about the same uh, applications as one of the flex arm tools of course it's not hydraulic driven it's doesn't have near as much torque pretty easy setup isn't it well, we'll try it get in there Just want to make sure you have clearance on your clamps. These aren't crucial. This is just for ease of installation here. I just wanted to bring you back 
basically I uh, I just omitted that whole uh, depth stop. There's some inconsistencies in the, in the way that those are set, so <clears throat> it must have shook itself loose after a while there. We're just gonna show you how quick this is. It's actually really, really quick. It's efficient. Um, just gonna knock these on. A little bit of bite to them. Not even gonna shut it off. Show you how quick you can get one of these done with one of these drills. So the hair, whoop, that freaking jumped on me. Alright, here we go. Couldn't do it again. It's a hair over snug. You don't want to put any depressions in your piece. <clears throat> that should clear that. Oh yeah. So we're gonna start. So you can see through this little window here. And you can see just how much it chamfered it. So that's just what we're gonna do. We're just gonna for about a sixteenth inch here. Add a couple of sugar packets under this machine. <laughs> a little bit of the shakes. See how quick that's going now. Looking fairly uniform. Self-centering. Very nice. Perhaps a little WD or tap magic would go a long way here, but for all intents and purposes, these are kind of superficial chamfers. I think I'm happy with that. Just clean her off. That's the last one. I might have took 10 minutes to get them all done, set up and done. I can't complain. Like I said, if you see one of these, they're awful handy for smaller stuff. That's a heck of a lot cheaper to run a one horse motor than a five horse motor on the big radio. Just brush all your chips off. And that's that. They're done, ready to go out the door. Might run over with some scotch brake quick. Just clean them up a hair. But she's smooth, look good. I believe I'm happy with that. Cool. All right, I'm gonna bring you back. We'll do some uh, chit chatting about some new acquisitions and uh, get some of you guys' opinions. So hang on. All right, so there they are. <clears throat> I did take and uh, went around them with some WD and a fine stone because oddly enough sometimes those deburring tools bring up just a small burr around the edge so I did do that and then I hit it with some gray scotch brake just to clean it up I think they look good they all measure uh, all the way around 385 thousandths or I'm sorry 383 thousandths uh, like we saw on the lathe and they're gonna work fine for the guy. So they're done, ready to go out the door. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and I hope that gave you some uh, insight on these little radio, ram type radio drill presses that Delta Rockwell and Walker Turner made. I think they're freaking awesome. Um, 
So I'm gonna spin you around, talk to you, then I'm gonna bring up probably some stills and uh, some still pictures and show you what I got going on with the new tool acquisitions. <clears throat> All right, hang tight. All right, guys. Uh, as far as the uh, new shop acquisitions, uh, first thing I picked up from uh, a really good buddy of mine, uh, good guy, hooks me up a lot. I try and help him out a lot. Uh, an Acra, so I think it's a 2015 model year, uh, Bridgeport clone milling machine with the variable speed, three horsepower motor, uh, digital readout already equipped on it, uh, one shot pump oiler, uh, fantastic shape, uh, primarily used for its entire life to just make holes in aluminum wheels. So there's barely any wear on it. I mean, this thing's like brand new. Um, the downfall to that, somebody did crash it trying to use power feed on the quail. Uh, I'll show you some details of, of what's going on there. But I will put some stills up before I take you over there so you can see it. I mean, this thing looks brand new. Uh, and I, I was offered a killer price on it. I had to take it. Um, that may entail me unloading the bridge port, which I'm not real keen on. I hate to do it. Because, I mean, the Acra is it's built well, but it's not built as well as the bridge port. The bridge port is really nice, but the bridge port's a 1957 model. So, uh, it's definitely a step up. Um, so I'll show you pictures of that and I'll, I'll take you over to my workbench and show you what's going on with it. <clears throat> Pretty easy fix. And I, I regret not recording, uh, tearing the variable speed apart, tearing the top of the head apart. Uh, we would like to show you guys that if you want, I can try and go into some detail yet. Let me know in the comments if you want. Maybe I can put up a quick video, show you the things you need to know to uh, pulling a, a Bridgeport head apart, Bridgeport style head apart. Um, the other thing I picked up was a uh, Gallmire Livingston number 25, 6 by 18 surface grinder on the cheap. I mean, real cheap. Um, <clears throat> It's a hydraulic traverse table with a ratchet mechanism for your uh, Z-axis, and it would be your on a grinder, <clears throat> which would typically be your Y-axis on a milling machine. Um, I did a couple test runs with it. I cleaned it up a little bit, you know, so I knew it wasn't going to destroy itself. Um, I found some inconsistencies in the piece that I ground. I actually put a reel up on Instagram and uh, a million people liked it. Not a million. All right. For me, a lot of people. <laughs> 470 maybe, I think now. <clears throat> but it's uh, it, it was showing there's a 2,000th uh, deficit on the leading edge. So it's 2,000th lower on the leading edge. And I think that may have been technique or stone related, like a, a wear of the stone until and had full contact. So the full width of the stone was on the part and then it was near perfect. So uh, this machine has some hope. Um, it, it is going to get checked over. It's probably going to get the chuck ground in. It's probably going to get the table looked at. Make sure there's not you know, your typical rust in between the magnet chuck and the table. Uh, possibly scraped in. It's going to get checked with a straight edge and an indicator. Um, straight edge is probably the best way on something like that. If you just check it with an indicator, that can be misleading. And uh, I'll probably go into that at some point. But that's the, uh, that's the other acquisition. And that's the other reason that the bridge port might need to leave. Because I've been trying for a while to get all the grinding tools in one bay where all the grinding mess and you know, dirty work can happen over here and all the you know precision milling work can happen over there which is probably best i mean i have a pressure pot sand plaster that i don't use because i'm worried about you know uh, sand particulates or glass bead uh, 
aluminum oxide beads getting on the, the lathe or the boring mill or the planer or you know any other machines over there so I just don't use it so if I can't find a home here that might be for sale too uh, I hate to do that but <clears throat> I also hate to be the guy that takes a, a metal planer that survived for over a hundred years and kill it you know in a couple of years so that's not gonna happen uh, I did go to the rough and tumble a couple weeks back in Kinsers PA if you haven't been there and you're close awesome show awesome show bunch of steam traction engines bunch of steam powered steam rollers they're freaking awesome uh, huge steam engine in their shed a couple of them but there's a huge one there's some hit and miss um, they have a really cool old machine shop with a, a planer uh, VTL what else do they have uh, a small it's a small Lucas HBM really small I forget what the number is um, but that's cool gear cutters uh, they have a brown and sharp mill like a number two brown and sharp mill older one a cool place really cool wine shaft shop and the swap meet swap meet was cool uh, maybe I'm just deprived from my local shows but uh, man I found stuff <laughs> I went with not enough money <laughs> and uh, I went with two and 200 and almost spent three <clears throat> or 350 <laughs> so um, yeah I would recommend that if, if you don't go or if you didn't go and you haven't been there you get a chance check that out super cool um, <clears throat> I picked up a really cool Jones and Laminson uh, geometric threading head with just about every imperial die doubles and triples of and a handful of metric dies like die sets so I plan on using that on the Warner Swayze number three turret lathe and doing a cool demonstration video for you guys <clears throat> so stuff to look forward to um <clears throat> sorry about that Whew. uh yes yeah, so our wheel spacers are done they could have been done a little better if i trammed that radial drill in a little bit better but uh, like i said for all intents and purposes that is only for ease of alignment on the studs and uh uh, uh, inconsistencies in the chamfers of those holes isn't going to add up to anything noteworthy as far as weight especially being that close to the inside of the hub it's fine uh, the real thing is that they're they're dead parallel and they're even um, uh, between all four of them they're, they're all 383 thousandths of an inch so dead perfect they'll work great for the guy that's what he asked for I shave 125 thousandths off them finish the parts off nice they look good they'll work good so uh, give me a minute I'm gonna put some pictures up of the Acra let you check that out and I'll put pictures up of the surface grinder you can check that out um, if you want to see some some work with that stuff uh, I do put stuff up on Instagram. It's, um, I think it's Shane.Winters.923 on Instagram. So check that out. Um, I try and put stuff up there regularly. If I can't get stuff on YouTube because uh, time constraints, I, I try and put stuff on Instagram. So at least I'm, uh, I'm trying to stay relevant a little bit. Um, I know it's been a while since I put a video out, but whatever. So let me put those pictures up and then I'll bring you back and I'll show you on the bench what I found in the head for the Acra and it's an easy fix. So hang tight. All right, so the Acro Mill. You can see this is your saddle assembly. 
uh, when you rotate when you rotate your uh, your knob that kicks your drives in for your power down feed all this does is swing this in to a worm drive and swing it back out that's all that does but it requires this gear in a substantial bit better shape than this to drive that thing um, which leads me to believe somebody tried to mill using the power feed you know drill a hole or and it just it didn't like it ate that thing ate the uh you see see i flipped this inside out but it ate the cogs clean off of the timing belt for the brick for the mill when it sits under your bull gears so that's gone so <clears throat> minor details nothing expensive just time consuming um shouldn't take long to fix i think it'll be a good mill <clears throat> so something to look forward to like i said let me know if you'd like to uh see a video of, of tearing down or putting back together of the acro mill <clears throat> i'd like to show you that running but i didn't get any video of that the thing is it's so quiet it's so quiet it's ridiculous that's one of the reasons i had to have it <laughs> so thanks for watching uh hopefully i can get you more content maybe a little quicker um maybe i hope this was interesting if not uh maybe i can get you something a little more interesting so don't forget to like subscribe tell your friends uh if you're a creator and you want one of my stickers let me know um probably the best way is to find me on instagram and message me there or just leave something in the comments and we'll figure out a way to get a hold um if you're not you, you give me an ask I, like i said i'm probably not going to say no i'll probably get you one i just it took a while to get those because my buddy that makes the stickers is yeah, uh, pretty busy <laughs> so but uh we'll do what we can all right thanks for stopping by and i'll see you on the next one